welcome to lesson three, AC circuits. This is part six with Dr. Ken. So now we're going to be looking at inductive reactants. It's similar to capacitive reactants. It is a reactants, and it is a reactants that creates an AC resistance in a circuit, but it works a little bit differently to the capacitive reactances that we learned about earlier. So, inductive reactants is the opposition to current in a purely inductive AC circuit, and we call it inductive reactants. Again, it's measured in ohms. The symbol for reactants, as we've already learnt, is the uppercase X. So, inductive reactants is X like with a subscript capital L. For capacitive reactants, it was subscript C. For inductors, it's subscript L. So here's the formula that we're interested in, calculating inductive reactants. The equation to find XL for a sine wave, it only works for a sine wave, XL equals 2 pi FL. Otherwise, 2 pi being 6.28, F being the frequency, and L being the inductance in Henry's. Inductors measure their reactance in inductance, I should say, in Henry's. So XL is the inductive reactance in ohms. 2 pi is a constant, which is 6.28. F is the frequency in hertz, and the inductance is measured in Henry's. So here's a little example. You can see here a regular old copper wound ballast and a inductor wrapped down a ferrite toroid core, it's called. So find the inductive reactance of these two particular inductances at 50 hertz. So we have inductor 1 at 2.8 henrys, inductor 2 is 10 milli henrys, and our frequency is 50 hertz. So we're going to use the equation XL equals 2 pi FL. I hope you took the time to pause the video and find that on your equation sheet so you know where it is. XL is 6.28 multiplied by 50 times 2.8 gives us 879.2 ohms for our large ballast type inductor. For our 10 millihenry inductor, far, far smaller. Again, same formula, XL equals 2 pi FL. So at 50 hertz, we have 6.28 times 50 times 10 times 10 to the minus 3 to allow for our millihenrys, giving us 3.14 ohms. So you can see a vast difference there. The higher the inductance, the more reactance, the lower the inductance, the less reactance. And you, if you remember about capacitors, this is the exact opposite to a capacitor. Example two, let's do another one. And again, take the time to pause the video and write these down in your uh, notes. It always helps to write things down. It will help you with your learning and your remembering, certainly for the short term. So we want to find one, the inductance of the coil, whose inductance is at 300 ohms at 250 hertz, and the frequency given an inductive reactance of 200 ohms for 400 millihenries. So it's a matter of transposing our equations and if we want to move L to the outside of the formula, it's simply a matter of taking the 2 pi FL and dividing both sides of the equation by 2 pi FL, which means L will equal XL divided by 2 pi F. So we simply take the 2 pi F and divide both sides. It cancels out on this side and you get XL left over 2 pi F. Giving us 300 divided by 6.28 multiplied by 250 our L is 0 0.19 henrys, or you could express that as 190 millihenrys. Our second value, 
we had 200 ohms and of XL and 4 millihenries. This time we want to find the, uh, the uh, frequency. So again, this time we take the 2 pi L and divide it under the XL. So we end up with a transposed equation of the frequency equals XL divided by 2 pi L. So 200 divided by 6.28 times 40 times 10 to the minus 3 gives us a frequency of 796.2 hertz. So by being able to manipulate our equation for capacitive, sorry, inductive reactants, we can actually find other values. So inductive reactants in Ohm's law, to find the current in a purely inductive AC circuit, we can use Ohm's law. Again, we're going to replace the R in Ohm's law with the reactants value. So we're simply going to say, for example, I equals V divided by XL. So that will give us the current. We can also transpose that Ohm's law equation into its other forms. So we can say XL is equal to V divided by I. And we can also say that V equals I times XL. Because XL is just basically the AC resistance. As long as we know what it is, we can treat it like Ohm's law. So a further example, what value of inductance do you need for a coil of negligible resistance that will cause a 500 milliamps when the coil is connected to 100 volts AC at 400 hertz? So we have 100 volts, 400 hertz, and we have 0.5 of an amp. How do we solve that? Well, we've got to work out the XL first, and we can do that using Ohm's law. We know that XL equals V on I. So 100 divided by 0.5, which is the current they told us that, gives us an XL of 200 ohms. Then we transpose our XL equals 2 on pi FL. So L is equal to XL divided by 2 pi F. And we get 200 divided by 6.28 multiplied by 400. And we have an inductance of 79.6 millihenries or 0.08 of a henry. So that gives you some idea of how you can use those formulas to work out currents and inductances and reactances around an AC circuit. So inductors in series, when pure inductors are connected in series, each inductor produces a back EMF due to the current flow. As a result, the total back EMF is increased, which opposes the current flow. Therefore, the total inductive reactance in the circuit has to increase. This is like series resistive circuit, where the total resistance in the circuit is just the addition of each of the resistors. Therefore, we can just add up the reactances. So if we have reactors in series, reactance total equals reactance one plus reactance two plus reactance three. That's reasonably easy and straightforward. So when you've got inductors in series, you can just add up their reactances and get the total reactance. Little bit different for inductors in parallel though. When pure inductors are in parallel, each inductor takes current from the supply. Because each current has the same phase difference to the supply voltage, that is 90 degrees, the currents can be added algebraically to obtain the total. Therefore, the total inductive reactants reduces the more branches that are added. So the equations to find the, the uh, total inductive reactants are similar to those for parallel resistors. So here we have the formulas for X 
XL in parallel. So XL total equals 1 on, 1 on L1 plus 1 on L2 plus 1 on L3. Or we can also write it as 1 on XL equals 1 on XL2 equals 1 on XL3, so on and so forth. And finally down here, if you only have two values, you can go XL times XL2 divided by XL plus XL1. So same formulas, very similar for resistors in parallel as you would for inductors in parallel. So one final example to finish off um, this part of the lesson, part uh, part six that we're in. So to find the total inductive reactance of a circuit, we have here 400 volts at 50 hertz, 64 millihenries in L1. We're told the current through I2 is 25 amps. So to find XL1, we simply go 2 pi FL equals XL. So 6.28 multiplied by 50 multiplied by 0 0.64. XL1 is 20.1 ohms. We know the voltage. We want to find XL2 now, but we can use Ohm's law to find that one because we have the voltage and we have the current. So we know that XL is also equal to the applied voltage and the current through that branch. So we can say 400 divided by 25. So XL2 is 16 ohms. Then finally, to find out the total XL for the circuit, we can go XL times XL2 divided by XL plus XL1, which is going to be 20.1 times 16 divided by 20.1 plus 16, it's going to give us a total of 8.2. Nine, one. So there you have some examples on how you can use inductors in AC circuits. Again, this is a pure inductor and it will get a little bit com more complicated as we go on, but for now, you've got a good idea.